Hello, regular knife people. Welcome back to another regular guys knife channel show. I know it's been just a just a few more days than I normally like, you know, before I uh, put a new video out. But unfortunately, I was <laughs> I was waiting on the new pop filter. I didn't want any more crazy weird audio. So, <clears throat> you know, as you can see by the uh, slightly uh, clickbaity title. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Spyderco C241 Capara, right? This was a knife designed by uh, Mr. Alistair Phillips from Australia. Uh, the name apparently it's some kind of uh, red-backed spider, uh, so hence the uh, red uh, G10 backspacer there. And this thing was, uh, it was designed to be a uh, vegetable slaying, uh, tofu murdering, uh, vegan, vegan knife. <laughs> whatever, whatever that means, right? Um, but really what we ended up here with is an absolutely, absolutely phenomenal EDC. Um, in, in, in my opinion, this is probably... Probably one of Spyderco's best EDC knives. I mean, it's not, you know, obviously that's a highly subjective <clears throat> statement, um, you know, because it really depends on what what you're EDCing. I know there's 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 a knife channel out there in particular where where he carries, you know, big huge honking Medfords, um, you know. So so it's obviously it's going to be based based upon your situation, but for the vast majority of your everyday cutting tasks, this knife is is more than up for the challenge, and uh, and we'll go over some of the features and, and some of the reasons why why I think it makes such a great uh, EDC. Um, I know there was a little bit of a stir when the knife came out a couple years back. It was super popular, then it disappeared. Um, then uh, I believe 2019 ish, um, <clears throat> it went into. Uh, Spyderco's uh, CQI program, which is when they kind of um, improve, you know, some things on the knives, and then it was re-released again. Um, you know, they're they're kind of they don't announce it like they, it's not like the Capara two or or anything like that. It's just the knife shows back up and it's you know better in some way or another. Um, so this is this knife in particular. This was a CQI knife, uh, and we'll go over some of them, some of those changes here when we start when we start disassembling it. Uh, but the specs on this guy is it's got a three and a half inch blade, three point five eight inch uh, blade. It's got a four point six eight closed length, and about about three and a half ounces, three point four ounces ish. Um, so you know length to weight ratio makes it you know a fairly light knife for its size um you know it has one of those kind of semi choils you know not really a choil into the blade but kind of a choil cut out there into the into the scales uh and 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 it really makes for a very a very uh a comfortable knife to carry and a very a very comfortable knife to use you you, you it's got a you got, you got a really locked in grip when you need it and then due to the shape and and kind of that dip there in the blade you've got various you know various hold styles for this knife um <clears throat> it's very liberal and very and very quick to get into the grip on this knife because there really isn't there really isn't many you know finger cutouts here in the in the uh, in the scales, you know that that kind of lock you into a specific grip. You can really, really change and move your hand on this knife to get to get set up for the for the you know the best hold you know for the specific cutting situation. Uh, this got a little sc scratched up. I've owned this knife now for ooh, about two and a half years, um, and and the first year I owned it, I carried it nearly that first year. Just it, there's no jimping. Um, I don't really feel like jimping is required. The, the blade is, is kind of on the thinner side, so there's no reason to get that real death grip on it to begin with because the blade's not going to stand up to that kind of that kind of force. So, so I really don't feel that it needs the jimping. And because of its lack of jimping, it, it fits. You know, it, it, it rides really nice in the pocket. Um, 
it has, pro, in my opinion, what I feel to be some of the best scales ever on a, on a production uh, a spider co. Um, you can see here they are they are carbon fiber, molded carbon fiber, not the peel ply shit, but but actual legit carbon fiber, and they have a slight crown to them. Um, not a polish, you know, kind of a kind of a satiny finish to them. And man, they are amazingly, amazingly comfortable in the hand. You know, uh, you can see the knife comes stock with one of their their techno wire clips. I absolutely fucking hate techno wire, the wire spider coes wire. I hate all wired clips in general, not specifically spider coes, but just wired clips in general. For some reason, I just can't stand them. Uh, so I do have a Rips Garage Tech uh, milled titanium pocket clip on this guy here. Techno wire replacement. Uh, this is a, a, a Tai Chung knife, um, Tai Chung Taiwan production knife, and it is in their uh, S30V. So, so you know, yeah, I mean, very known quantity. We all know Spyderco's S30V. We all know how well it's, you know, it, it, it's a very good, you know, balance of, of edge, re, edge retention, sharpenability, and 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 anti corrosion. I, I still think to this day. You know, it isn't the newest, fanciest, most wazoo steel, but I I still think to this day S30V, you know, stands up really well on its own and it is not, you are in no way handicapped because it's an S30 knife and not an S35 or S45 or 3V or crew wear or whatnot. It's it's, it's still a decent, decent knife steel. Um, let's see. Let me grab a couple of the other, a couple of the Spyderco's other popular EDC choices and we can, we can look at them side by side, so... We've got the uh, PM2. This happens to be the Crew Carta variety. Um, again, very similar length, similar size blade, but I'll close them up here and we can look at their 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 actual carry profile, and you, and you can kind of see where this knife excels, right? And my my heavily modified smock here, right? Slightly shorter blade, right? Overall, same length, wide close length, just just a little bit, slightly a little bit less, you know, of, of a blade, and a lot less cutting surface, or a lot less cutting area on this blade in particular, All right? And so, so closed. You can we can get a look here and see how they they'll stack up side by side and carry in the pocket, All right? So you can see not quite as thin as the smock, right? But definitely not as tall as the uh, as the uh, as the PM2, and kind of one of one of my one of the things that I hate the most about the PM2 is is I maybe love hate would be would be more would be more the the, the right way to say it, but it's this jimping right here because inevitably what happens is whatever I'm fishing for in the pocket in my right hand pocket that I'm carrying this knife ends up falling right below the knife. So I have to dig past it with my hand to grab my change for the soda machine or or, or my chapstick, right? And and I'm I'm rubbing against that jimping and it's always sharp and it's always uncomfortable. And and it's one of the reasons why I, I don't regularly carry that PM2. Um well that and I don't really you know it it's a lot of knife for a standard EDC, but it's a big bulky knife, right? And if you need something that's kind of got that, you know, that oomph to it, and you know, the PM2 is a great knife. I'm not saying it's not a not a good EDC, right? It's just overall for every day, grab it and put it in my pocket, you know, user out of out of every Spider Co I own, the the, the Capara is probably my most EDC knife. Um, you know, it it it's extremely slicey um i've sharpened it to to a seven, 17 degree angle over the standard factory 20. um because it is such a thin profile blade i really like how slicey it is especially with that 17 degree you know edge on it um it just it eats cardboard and paper and amazon packages uh it, it it's absolutely fantastic for for just 95 percent of what i need a knife for um, cleaning trout, uh, you know, it, everything. You can see this one's kind of scratched up because because this guy's a user. Um, you know, it 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 
it goes out it leaves the house with me probably more than any other knife it's also a knife i tend to kind of i kind of overlook on on occasion and then and then we'll rediscover you know a month later and, and forget how amazing this knife is um one of the big reasons why is it is the smoothest knife i own the action on this knife is is bar none and it and it and it I, I will I will go so far as to say that the that the the opening action on this knife rivals some 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 twenty five hundred dollar shuros you know that I've, that I've handled um, and and it, it does have a very it does have a unique pivot system at least unique for for Spyderco and as far as I know it's the only Spyderco currently using this style of pivot um, and that's got a lot to do with it and that was a a result of its uh, CQI uh, redesign. But but this knife is, man, you know it, it so snappy, you know it and and so smooth and it's a very fidgety knife, just by how effortless effortlessly it, it it snaps open and it's not because it has a weak a weak detent by by any any means it's it's a fairly you know tight you know anti litigious you know detent on that blade but it's the pivot it's just it's almost not there you know it's it's so so buttery smooth and it's not a result of bearings um you know again it we'll, we'll take it apart and take a look at it but it's a uh, you know it's a fully flat ground uh blade you know the flat the grind goes all the way up to the spine it does make it you know if you're using a, a a jig sharpening system it does make it a little bit more interesting to get it to get it good and clamped down so that so that you can sharpen it um this knife is just a bit scratched up here on the edge because i do use this guy quite a bit um and 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 yeah but you know other than the pocket clip there there's nothing i would change to this knife you know factory um, I know Rips Garage Tech. They do make make some various micarta scales. Or you know, if you're a sweaty guy and you need that that extra grip that you get from like uh, linen micarta, you know, Rips is, is has got you. But but I I absolutely love the factory scales on this knife. Um, <clears throat> and I, I again, I think it's one of the very one of the high points. That and, and I don't know what it is, but I I like that red G10 backspacer. It just kind of you know, it's not. It's not like a bright red. It's more of like a darker fire engine red kind of, you know. And it just to me, it just says Spyderco. I don't know, you know. It's just I, I I love the styling of this knife and 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 how it looks overall. But uh, but yeah. So so again, the scales are very unique. I don't think I've ever owned another Spyderco that's had you know those crowned chamfered scales like this guy has. And I've definitely not owned a Spyderco that has this this style of pivot system. If there's another Spyderco out there, you know, and, and and I'm full of shit, you know, go ahead and go ahead and chime in in the comments and let me know which uh which other Spydercos use the, uh, the the this similar kind of pivot. But but as far as I know, this is this has been this the Kapar is unique for the for the Spyderco line. Um, and and we'll we'll get it apart. It's been it's been quite a while since I've gotten this guy apart. I probably got a good solid six or seven months worth of carry on this thing. Um, since the last time I took it apart and cleaned it and it is due for a sharpening. So we'll be doing, we'll still be doing the sharpening video. I just, uh, you know, video is a little late. Didn't want to, didn't want to, you know, smack you guys with, with something as, uh, as, uh, riveting and as interesting as sharpening and a knife. I'm going to do that video. I'll probably do it tomorrow. I'll get another day off. So, so we'll get that video out there. I just can't, uh, you know, the upload times on these videos, it's too hard to get two of them done back to back. I don't have... I don't have that kind of attention span to sit there and, and watch the uploads for, for three or four hours. You got shit to do, beer to drink, you know, it's it's just yeah. So but yeah, well so we'll take it apart, we'll take a much closer look. Um you know, I I, I had this knife out this week, carried it this whole week, um and, and I thought about it and, and and I kinda like to show off knives that are that are a bit unique. You know, at least in their in their function, maybe not so much their shape. There's there's plenty of uniquely shaped knives out there, but 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 I'm really you know I, as you guys I'm sure you can tell I'm really interested in in the mechanics of the knife, right? The the engineering in it because it's you know we, we we have enough you know frame lock titanium super steel sandwiches out there, and they're just you know take 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 your pick, choose the one that's most aesthetically pleasing, and move on. I I, I kind of like knives that have some 
something unique to them, whether it's the locking mechanism or, or it's the pivot system, uh, you know, it, it tend to what, what kind of draw me. Um, so, so not only does this knife have a, have a really unique pivot, you know, or at least unique for Spyderco, it, it, it uses some of those kind of tri looking, you know, pivot bolts. I can't remember if they're titanium or not. We'll check them with the magnet when I get them off. Um, yeah. And, and, and they use these big, giant, chunky body screws, right? These are big, huge T8 button heads, man. And they work really well. And, and, you know, there's, you know, three, three screws to, to disassembly. You know, it, it's just a knife that lends itself very well to, to being, to being a regular EDC. Even the blade size at three and a half inches, it's a bit long for a lot of people I know. I know, you know, but because it is so thin and and because it is kind of a non-threatening oh i guess sheep's footy uh you know style of shape it really does not feel like a three and a half inch knife um it really feels like a much smaller much smaller knife than than it's than it's three and a half inches and because there's not an actual choil in the in the blade itself it's back here towards the pivot you know, you still get all of that cutting edge, you know, and, and I guess you've used for its intended purpose of, you know, slicing, slicing vegetables, right? <laughs> then you want as much, as much, you know, real edge real estate as you can, as you can get. Oh. All right, so let's get into this. So it's T8 body screws and a T10 pivot. So this guy is left or right hand tip up carry only, which is fairly common for those um, for the uh, tech wire clips. And the other thing is because of the way the pivot works on this thing, you can really, really keep that pivot locked down. So there's no reason, no reason whatsoever to, to drench this guy in Loctite. It's not going to loosen up on you. You can keep it tight enough. You cannot, you know, this, you'll, you'll see when we get it apart. Let me get a, grab a magnet here. Completely non-magnetic, so it's going to be a titanium pivot. And like all Tai Chung knives, they are tight. So we'll get that scale off and start the white down. But you can see that is not peel ply carbon, but actual legit molded carbon fiber. Very, very well done scales. Super light, super stiff super good looking those are man i wish spider code would, would put those scales on more knives they are they are some sexy sexy done scales man you know i i, I love modifying my spider codes i love you know changing them up i love modifying you know making them my own but but not this one i you know this is one of those knives i feel like Spider Co got it perfect right out of the box, and and other than that clip, which is a personal preference thing, I know a lot of people love those tech wire clips. I I just prefer not to have them, but but I like this this knife just just the way it is. So, yeah, like all Tai Chung knives, it is a bit tight getting part. Really, all Spider Co's are that way. I mean, they're they're very very tight tolerances, and now we see all the pocket gunk. All right, so we do have a lightened, skeletonized liner. Stainless, of course. We've got the G10 backspacer. We don't need to take that out, but... All right, eee! I don't know what I had in there that was green. Oh yeah, because that's going to be trapped under the uh, 
pivot screw. And like all, all spider codes, you know, it'll have, I guess we can take that pivot out and look at it. It'll have an anti-rotation pivot and it'll be a threaded tube, you know, with a, with a screw on either side. On the anti-rotation side, it actually traps the, uh, it traps the washer, or it traps the, the bronze washer there. And keeps that whole assembly from, from spinning. I don't even know if I want to fool with getting this thing out. But we will try for, this, for the sake of the video here. We'll put the screw partially back in and then we'll just use that to push out the pivot here. We can get a get a good clean here on these on these washers because it's nice a little grody. All right, and it does it does have two blade stop pins, so a top and a bottom pin. Um, I'm not sure why. I, but you can see there is a there is an internal track cut for that internal pin for that other that secondary pin there. So again, slightly different. And now we're going to get to the part that makes this knife unique here. All right, this this knife has a bushinged pivot. So instead of just writing, you know, on a, on a hole drilled through the blade, right? This knife actually has a hardened steel bushing that rides against the hardened steel pivot. So we can rinse that out there a little bit. And there you can see we have a bushing pivot. You do see this construction a bit more often in like um, Bali songs and, and, and whatnot. Uh, knives that are that are continuously opened and opened and opened and opened and opened. Stuff, you know, cutting down on the wear on that blade. Um, so, so yeah, so, but a bit unique. And, and that right there, that little, uh, I guess we'll call it a pivot bushing. I mean, I guess would be the would be the nomenclature for it. Um, but that little guy there, you know, that that's all. That's the magic, right? Um, I know uh, uh, some of the 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 the, the, shiros, the sugar robs, they have a similar system on some of their knives. Um, you know, the the difference being, I could buy, you know, five of these and then have enough left over for a down payment on a decent car. Um, but, but Spyderco uses these and is, and from what I understand, I did not own a, uh, I did not own a, a, a Kapara before, uh, before the CQI. I've only owned a post, uh, CQI knife. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure if that was present in the original, but from, from what I have read, it was not that, that, that pivot system, that, that, that pivot bushing was a result of the, uh, the CQI. So, so yeah, so again, we'll use, uh, I like to use a bit of uh, a product called Empro 7. It's traditionally a gun cleaning product um, for, for cleaning and degreasing. I like using it because it, it one, it doesn't smell, uh, and two, it leaves a anti-corrosive film on the knife. So, so just a little bit of added protection, you know, we'll just do a quick clean. It does have a, like most, you know, spider codes, it does have a nice large, uh, lanyard hole, you know. So for all you guys that like adding jewelry to your 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 jewelry, right? You can you can add a uh, add a nice pivot bushing or or a uh, land lanyard and a lanyard bead to this knife, right? So we're just gonna scrub it up a little bit and then I'll wipe it out. But get the these guys all wiped down. Like I said, this guy gets used quite a bit, and and I, and I, and I, and and you know, for 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 the sake of 
of the maker. I have used it to slice up uh, fruits and vegetables. <laughs> it does an amazing job on apples and tomatoes, you know, both. But I guess that's two fruits. So maybe I have yet to use this on an actual legit vegetable. But if you want to be pedantic about it, but I, but, but, but as far as most of us normal people are concerned, I did use it on, on, on fruits and vegetables. So, so yeah, that's pretty much in the nutshell. I mean, it's, it's a, like I said, it's a very lightweight knife. Um, very well just put together. I mean, as, as all, you know, as all of the, the, the Tai Chung knives and gold, all, all of spider codes are put together or, or put together well. I mean, I can't really say, but, but obviously, you know, you know, the Tai Chung knives in particular are probably some of their best knives. And then we'll get this blade cleaned up and we'll take a closer look at the double at the double blade stop you know which is kind of cool too and kind of different you don't you don't see that quite as often and I'm not a hundred percent sure if that is a artifact of you know the pivot bushing if that was something that 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 the maker you know if that was a unique a unique feature to the designer you know or or what but it works particularly well I'm trying to think of why this grease might be green I don't don't use or if it's just the just the mixture of the lube and water and you know, it's mo most of my EDC nights, like if I can't just run them under the, the kitchen sink, rinse them out and dry them off, then, then it's really, I'm really not interested in, in them as, as far as an EDC knife goes. You know, I mean, you should be able to just clean these things off underneath, uh, underneath in, in the sink, you know, and put it back in your damn pocket. You know, happen to get all crazy and special with it for like, a, you know disassembling it every time I use it I'm that's not an EDC knife you know or at least it's it's an EDC knife for the anal retentive I suppose but but for most of us mere mortals that's it's that's not going to cut the mustard all right all right so everything else looks pretty clean so yeah so a lot of unique features to this knife and a lot of unique features I mean Spyderco does have some pretty some fairly re unique unique knives you know the the you know this guy right here he, you know that's obviously it's not a spider co designed right you know that's that's a designed by a designer knife and, and it is also a product of, of of taiwan but you know spider co does does generally you know they they do have their you know vanilla more vanilla knives and then they also do have some some fairly wild knives you know that's one of the things that makes collecting spider codes interesting right is you have such a broad a broad range of knives you know for for you know for one company you know you you take like the bench maids for instance you know they're all fairly you know bleh. you know they're all you know they it seems like they come out like with a good design like the bug out or the the osborne and then they fucking stick to it you know for the next 20 years Right, Spyderco comes out with a whole raft of new knives every year, you know, and and so you're always get constantly getting something new and exciting, and they're and they're constantly showcasing new, you know, new designers, you know, and 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 so so it's it makes it makes makes collecting them fun and interesting, right, and and kind of exciting because you you know you're always gonna get something new. Oh. So yeah, that's. That is about it. Um, you know, I one thing I wish kind of Spyderco would, would start doing um, that that I've started to see on a couple of other knives. Chavez for for, for one does it, but they use a a an, an alignment kind of pin that's pocketed into the uh, into their backspacers, but it's it's the blade stop pin, right? Because I, you know, how often have you dropped one of them dudes, right? You drop it, it bounces underneath the entertainment center or wherever, and then it's lost to the world, and now and now your knife is essentially unusable. It's useless, right? But companies like Chavez, I think Giant Mouse does it on some of theirs too. Um, you know, they 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 
you know, like I said, they drill an alignment hole for their backspacer, and then they use a second blade stop pin to be their to be that alignment pin. So if you were to lose the blade stop, you could always pull that pin out of the backspacer and then replace it, and then your knife would be right back up and going. Um, whether that was an intentional feature or it was a cost cutting measure to use, you know, double just to double up on that hardware, not sure, but you know. I would think that that would be, you know, that that could come in clutch, especially for these floating, you know, blade stop pins that aren't like pressed in, you know. I think that would could be a uh, <laughs> could be a clutch feature, you know. Had had something terrible befallen and 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 you dropped your your part, you know, and and lost it and into the uh, into the carpet of nowhere, right? And I don't. know you know, I, I was I was doing some maintenance and cleaning and 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 sharpening of my uh, of my two uh, Demcos, my two eighty twenty point fives, and actually it was one. I was doing my uh, titanium three V eighty twenty point five, and uh, and I shot the spring into outer space. So I thought, well, you know, I can always order. You know, the, I think I, the Knife Center sells three packs for like just a couple of bucks. So I was going to order a three pack. So I went and I was going to take the uh, spring out of my my Grivery twenty point five just to hold me over until I got them in the mail. Well, I also managed to shoot that one into outer space as well. So now I have two Demco twenty point fives disassembled in the parts bin, waiting on springs now from from the Blade Center. So so so. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's kind of nice when it when a company does include that feature that that you can get your knife back up and running if you were to lose a piece of the hardware. But, but again, you know, that would be nice at some point in the future, if if Spider was to go that way, or just press the damn blade stops in, and then we don't have to worry about it. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure what advantage there is of having that, you know, that pin floating there. Uh, so this guy does have kind of a brushed finish to it. It is an absolute fingerprint magnet um you know i i think you know if they were to to do a, a sprint run of this knife or a limited release you know and they were going to upgrade the steel or something not something nice i think like a a you know like a like a rubbed you know lc 200n would be an absolutely fantastic blade and fantastic fit for this knife especially on a knife that was originally designed to be cutting open vegetables and fruits and stuff things that are really acidic and could could possibly corrode or etch the steel, you know that 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 two hundred N is a, is a absolutely fantastic knife steel, and a beautiful easy steel to sharpen too. So so that would be a cool a cool steel, you know, Spyderco if you're listening, you know, at some point in the in the future, um, you know, it, it would be great. I know I love Crewwear and, and and they've been doing Crewwear on on quite a few knives lately as far as limited runs um but yeah i think uh you know using the knife as an intent as intended you know i wouldn't most of us aren't are aren't, aren't slaying tofu and 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 carrots with with our with our pocket knives you know so so really it's arbitrary for us right but you know in the spirit of the design of this knife i think a, a very high corrosion resistant super steel would be would be pretty awesome right all right, so so that's 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 pretty much you know we're we're you know we we we've, we've got her undressed right we were looking up her skirt right now so so we're gonna get this guy put back together and lubed up a little bit and then uh, this will be the knife probably that I sharpen tomorrow I do need to I do need to get it sharpened uh, and and I've been sharpening a lot of other knives lately and so I just didn't been dragging my feet but i'll make you guys come along with me with that one and and we'll throw it up on the sharpener i've been testing out uh i've got some new uh some new accessories for my prof um they're uh they're an l-shaped uh blade holder holder i guess and and they allow you to basically basically they allow you to put your two blade holders side by side for really small knives or you can flip them over and extend them out further on the sides for very large knives. So they really, you know, they really do expand the capacity of the prop system. They work on the cadets and the uh, and the and the O3s, um, and they really do expand. I have like some Wazoo adapted 
center holder crazy setup that I got from uh, Gridomatic, <laughs> and and while it works, it it's just a giant pain in the ass. It doesn't use the the, the speed knobs. It uses Allen nuts and or Allen bolts, and it's just a big giant pain in my ass. Um, but but these new these new L holders, and I'll show those off in the video tomorrow. Um, they do they do use the 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 standard thumb screws for adjustments and stuff, and they're and they're pretty awesome. Plus, they push the knife a little bit further away, about three quarters of an inch further out, uh, so they allow you to get your your stone down at a little bit at a little bit more shallower of an angle. So knives that you traditionally would have a hard time doing, say a 17 degree uh, uh, edge on, these will these will uh, these will probably allow you to do it. I had a knife that that at 17 degrees I was hitting the thumb stud on it. But by pushing it out just a little bit, you know, with this with these new L holders, it allowed me to get that angle down and get a get a true 17 degree on there. Normally, I sharpen all Spydercos at 20 because that's what the sharp maker is, and because that's the product that that got Spyderco off the ground. You know, that was that was you know before before you know before the Spyderco knives actually were were, were hit the market. It was the sharp maker, you know, and 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 that's what was what they were peddling, you know, at, at every gun show and knife show and 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 state fair, you know, that, that they could get into, you know, that was that was that was the product that that got that got Spider off the ground. So, anyways, I don't I don't it sharpens at a twenty degree angle, and and so I don't I well, I'm a traditionalist, and I like to to stay at that, but this knife here particularly. Because it is a thinner blade and it is used more for a slicing type type tasks, you know, 17 degrees I thought was was more apropos. So I did change the, the sharpening angle on this knife. And generally on my smaller, thinner, you know, blade stock uh, EDC knives, I do generally sharpen them at a 17 degree, 17 degree angle. I do like that more sliciness I get from it. But but yeah. Oh. All right, so beer is gone we can start putting this knife back together I guess we'll get that pivot done first and we'll put the right stop in lessen the chance of losing that thing So like all spider co's base basically the same pivot as as any other you know spider co the d-shaped anti-rotation tube tube there this one fits a bit snugger than, than i'm used to but yeah and put the again these are a t10 And they are titanium. And if you do the standard dark blasted finish from from rips, it will match. It matches perfectly with the color of the pivot. So, so yeah, that kind of shit matters to you. Oh nope. Actually, I think I'll see if it'll fit down because none of these are D hold. I don't think. Nope. But that is definitely the blade side. Okay. And for the 500th time, I like to use the uh, it's the Liberty Oil Products synthetic lubricant. Um, I think they marketed this one for 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 skate bearings, um, but it is a high speed turbine, uh, uh, high temperature bearing oil, uh, and you know it's it's. It's still fairly thin, so it'll get down into the, you know, where you need it, into those tiny little bearings. 
but it's a lot more stickier than your traditional uh, uh, pivot lube or oils that are used for pivot lube, like you know the 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 rem oils, the uh, the the KPLs, those kind of things. It's a bit stickier, so it so me personally, I feel like those KPL style lubes. The the on a, on a kinetically opening knife, a knife that you're going to flick open, that oil will pull away from 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 the pivot, and whereas that knife starts out having that nice slick, well oiled feel, within a few days it starts feeling, you know, under lubed again. This stuff that Liberty likes to stick around. Plus, for fourteen bucks, you essentially get a lifetime, you know, you get a lifetime supply, and I get it on Amazon. Um, you know, KPL is good. It's not good stuff. It's, it's, I like it on, on friction folders and, and, and slip joints and stuff. Cause it, it'll, you know, knives that I don't take apart, <laughs> but, but we'll, but we'll penetrate down into it and, and get at that pivot. KPL is fine. Um, but it's expensive. It's ridiculously overpriced for what it is. And so I reserve that for, for special situations in which I need it. All right, so get a little bit in. I don't know what to call this thing. Pivot bushing, pivot tube, whatever it is. Drop that down on there. And so be, it, it does fit a bit tighter um, than what you'd think on both the blade and on the pivot itself. But it's, you know, it spins, and then the blade can spin on it, so it's splitting that friction over a much larger surface area, and so it can be tight while still being, while still feeling a lot looser and and and, and smoother. You're effectively, you know, increasing the surface area of that pivot. So so that's kind of the the magic there. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil here inside this track. I don't see any scratching or shiny areas, so so I would be I would be surprised if if there's any friction or if that knife is actually contacting into that surface. But you know, just in case, belt and suspenders, right? That blade stop in there. There you go. So yeah, two blade stops. Kind of weird, kind of different, but it works, right? Get a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil right there in the detent hole. Put our bearing back in there. oil on the bronze washer and we can snap this thing back on and snap is the right word right on these uh, spider coves all right now we can go ahead and put the scale back on the liner And like I said, you can run this pivot extremely, extremely tight. A lot tighter than you would normally run your pivots because it's because of that, that sleeve, that pivot sleeve, you know, it, it remains extremely smooth and, and loose feeling. I don't feel the need to go through this big adjustment process with it every time I put the knife back together. I love these big, chunky, button head body screws, too, that Spyderco uses. You know, you would... You would have to add, put in some work to strip these things out. Big and chunky and massive. I don't know. I like that. That's definitely my favorite. So. I'm 
absolutely smooth as silk and wiggle free. I'm actually going to tighten it up even a little bit more than I just did there. There's no wiggle. And that knife could not be, could be any smoother. I mean, this knife has to be, the with this pivot, it has to be a compression lock knife. I mean, if if this was a, a, a frame lock, it would be a thumb guillotine. I mean, there's, there's zero, I mean, it's like a, it's like a PM2, like a well super broken in PM2, you know, that you've, you've been, you've been religiously carrying for the last two years right out of the box. I mean, whatever dynamic is going on in there with that, with that pivot sleeve just makes this knife incredibly incredibly smooth to operate i don't you know again there's very few knives that i own or have, have felt that it actually feel that have this kind of smoothness have this kind of snappiness to its to its opening um you know and 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 most of those knives are a hell of a lot more expensive um, you know, if you really appreciate those real smooth, you know, that real smooth, snappy action, not that kind of, not the hydraulic action like you'd see on a Chris Reeve or, you know, a lot of the zero tolerances or, or, uh, or a, you know, the Spartan, you know, that, that, that I showed off last video, you know, it, it, it feels like it's on bearings, but as you saw, you know, this is a washer knife, right? It just has that that feel to it you know it is just it's perfection right and 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 so you know taking into account the fidget factor how slicey it is how well made it is um the non-threatening you know nature uh, you know a shape of its blade you know whatever you know if that matters to you um you know just just factoring everything in that makes this knife the knife that it is that makes this the capara you know i I think this is probably one of the most sensible EDC knives that 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 Spyderco makes. You know, it looks good. It looks good with would look good with jeans and a t-shirt, and and it would look good in in you know and in, in you know in a polo and slacks. I mean, it's 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 beefy enough to be to be a regular everyday EDC knife, and it's it's pretty enough to be you know to be a more dressy you know gentleman's knife. They're just I, you, you know, I, I, again, I, I, I know I've said this the past couple of videos, and now it's it's starting to get a little cliche. But right, if you're gonna only own one knife, right? There you go. You know, I mean, you know, if you have a need to baton a knife through 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 a log, a folder is probably not the knife for you to begin with, right? I mean, that's a fixed blade knife. If if you know, if you're skin and deer with with your EDC knife, then that's a particular knife. You know, there's, you know, there 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 are outlying situations where there are plenty of, you know, very specialized knives for those tasks. But but as far as a knife that you're going to carry and use for everyday normal tasks that everybody is doing, whether it's slicing an apple or or, or slicing open an Amazon package, you know, cutting some banding or 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 you know cutting a tag off your wife's bra right you know this knife is going to do it and it's going to do it well and then for the other 80 percent of that time when you have this knife that's in it's sitting in your pocket you know it's going to be comfortable it's going to be a comfortable knife to carry um so so yeah that's kind of my my treatise on this knife and 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 i know every time i see a video about an edc you know spider co the the pair don't get me wrong, PM2's Para 3's fin fantastic, phenomenal fucking knife, right? Fantastic knife. But but I don't, I also don't believe that it's the be-all, end-all knife. And, and, and I think it's, I think it's less, I think it's it's less sensible of a, of a, of a carry knife for, for more, pe for, for most people than, than the Kapara is. And, and yeah, and, and it was kind of odd. I, I, I don't remember, I don't know if I mentioned it when I was, you know, talking about when me and the boy child, when we went out to the, to the Blade Show West, but, but we were up at the, the Spyderco, uh, Spyderco booth and we were kind of fighting over the last couple of big books, you know, the, 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 of the catalogs and, 
and when it came down to it, the uh, the booth girl there, the 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 the, the very intelligent and very knowledgeable, uh, uh, and and you know, easy on the eyes individual that was working there at the booth, you know, they she she asked what our favorite Spider Co was, and 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 the other guy that was asking for the the catalog, of course, you know, PM two, and and I had said, well, the you know, the Capara, and because that was also her favorite Spider Co, <laughs> I was handed a catalog. So, so yeah, you know, I'm obviously I'm not the only one that feels that way out there. And, and regardless if it's an intended, you know, if it's original intended design for a purpose was to, was to, you know, mangle a block of tofu. Uh, I do believe this, this knife is just as fitting and, and is just as useful for, for those of us who, 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 you know, who eat dead animals. Right. So, so yeah, so that's kind of my thought, uh, on this knife and, and, you know, again, I apologize for the slightly clickbaitish you know, title it, you know, I, I just didn't want to put spider go Capara because it would have gotten 54 views. Right. Um, so yeah, so, so I'll get this uh, video uploaded tonight and then uh, I will have another video tomorrow and we're going to do a little bit of sharpening. It's not going to be a video all I'm just sharpening cause it's, I use a jig system and, and it's very repetitive and very boring. Plus that's my, my me time, my Zen time The you know, I, I put some good music on and, and and drink some booze or some beers and and just kind of get into the rhythm and it's it's a very it's you know it's my hour and a half of meditation right um but but i'll go through it and what i do and and some of the mods to my to my system or to over to, to you know over the standard ts prop system some of the things that i've changed and uh and yeah but but then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna discuss some we're gonna discuss some knife steals right and 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 resources for for information on knife steels and uh and 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 i want to talk about a very very fantastic book that that uh that that even if you are not interested does support you know and you know it does help support an individual who has really given a lot you know to our to our community so so we'll talk about that tomorrow but uh but yeah, I'm going to wrap it up for the night. I appreciate you guys coming along with me and, and uh, spending some time checking out another very sexy uh, knife from Spider Co. And, and uh, I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys like what you see, I know this is probably a long video and I probably should have said this somewhere around the front because I think my average watch time right now is like seven and a half minutes. Um, but, you know, go ahead and subscribe, man. You know, you know, I, I, I'm... I'm I'm very fortunate and and very thankful for for all those who who put in that faith in me to subscribe to me up to this point, um and 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 I would like to do more you know polls and opinions and and do more videos and 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 I think you know with more subscribers it's it it's you know we'll do it and 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 either way you know we'll do it anyways you know I can't say that that's that's that's, that's kind of a shit move you you guys subscribe or, or, or those who've already subscribed ain't getting shit no well we're, we're gonna pick it up um I finally got full access as a at full access as a rec as a creator and so I can do the uh the community posts and polls now and uh you know with with uh with participation comes comes privilege you know not for me necessarily but from youtube you know to 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 us and and we'll go again you know i'd like to kind of grow this you know and and make this more about you know necessarily knives but not 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 just the newest most wazoo you know not not the newest flashiest knife out there you know and 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 when i began when i really started knife collecting um i, I bought a lot of shit knives I bought a lot of shit knives based solely on on the reviews I was watching on YouTube. And I'm not talking like, yeah, I just didn't like the styling and he did. No, that, fuck no. These were terrible knives. These were terrible knives that I was told were the greatest and latest, you know, EDC. And, you, and obviously they hadn't carried that knife anywhere further than from the mailbox to the, to the, to the, to the bench where they were doing the filming because the knives were absolute fucking garbage. Um, and, and I went through a lot of those knives and then that's when I stopped, you know, I stopped taking their opinions for what they were. So, so I'm kind of reticent, you know, to, to give my opinion, you know, I, I'll give my opinions, but, but, but to recommend and, and, I, and I'm trying to give you guys an, a, a fair and balanced view of what I see and, and, and hopefully that'll help, you know, you know, it'll help guide you in your purchasing 
But in the end, I want you to take everything I say with an absolute grain of fucking salt. If you have the ability to handle that knife in person, handle that knife in person before you purchase it, right? Get, 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 touch it, feel it, sniff it, you know, whatever you got to do. But, but, but don't buy a knife based solely on what I'm telling you, right? And because, you know, the last thing I want to do is waste a couple hundred of your dollars. You know, money's tight at the moment and, and, and we need to spend it wisely. So, so by all means, I, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, you guys are kind of, kind of putting me talking in the background and you're really just enjoying kind of the visuals and and you're going yeah you know he's got some you know there you got some medium-sized hands that knife likes it looks like it might fit mine um but 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 yeah but i i don't know where i'm going because it's a three beer ramp ramble at this point but uh but yeah so yeah i appreciate you guys coming along with me tonight and i really appreciate you guys uh, uh watching it to the end if you made it to the end and uh, i hope you guys have a fantastic uh night and hopefully we'll be seeing you tomorrow this is the uh regular guy and the regular guy's knife channel and we're signing off